Let's try to make some sense of what's going on and get some macro strategy calls. We have Kay Van Peterson from Saxo Capital Markets joining Tony and me. Oil uh, prices, where they are, a boon or bane for the economy? It depends who you ask, I guess. Um, if you're an oil producer or an oil company, you're definitely hurting right now. Uh, you know, for instance, there's a lot of talk out there that I think the Russian budget is, is oil over $100. Uh, but very much a boon for, uh, you know, discretionary spending and well, consumers around think, the globe. that's the data hasn't been showing up. So the consensus out there in the markets is really that there will be a recovery in prices in the second half of the year and everything will yeah. be goody two shoes. But you think, no way, it's going to stretch out into 2016. Why? I think so. Well, I guess my take is... You know, uh, I don't think a lot of people want to come to grasp with reality of what's kind of happened. I mean, we're down 50% in a very short amount of time for a reason, mm. right? I think the average oil price last year, you know, for the first half was $106. Mm. And as I said, we're at 45 now. And, you know, it's, it's very easy to say that we should bounce back. But at the same time, supplies keep coming online. We just had... Uh, you know, better than expected U.S. inventories mm -hmm. uh, early on this week. I believe U.S. inventories are at record levels since 1924, right? Uh, Iraq is printing at, you know, new record levels, I think over 4 million barrels. So you think it's a supply issue, but you actually just told me it's more of a demand issue. I think the, the, the price itself is a demand issue, okay? Mm. You do have the Iraqi fields producing. Yeah. You know, this is great, but uh, I think the reason we've seen the dramatic price action that we've seen is more of a demand issue. Where is the demand? We're just not seeing it. Even the U.S. at 2 plus percent growth, it's not driving global prices like it would have. We see Chinese growth going down to 6.7 percent this year, according to the IMF. We see, you know, our own forecasts show intra-EU trade at negative 3.5 percent for 2015. So if oil prices, according to your scenario, uh, the recovery doesn't happen until 2016, what do you buy? And you focus on regions uh, such as Indonesia, such as India, such as the Philippines that, uh, you know, benefit greatly from uh, reduced energy prices. But then you again, focused... Indone isn't Indonesia also... Uh, well, I mean, it's got, yeah. it's got a lot of other issues, but you, in yeah. relation to oil, mm -hmm. as you asked, right? It, it, it is a beneficiary. And I actually disagree with your earlier point. I think it will feed through to consumer discretionary spending. Mm -hmm. I really think you're going to see that over the next kind of few quarters coming out of the U.S. And I think you're already kind of trying, starting to see a lot more kind of green shoots in, in Europe out of all places uh, with lower energy prices. What but about it takes the collapse time. in CapEx? How is, how is that going to filter through? That's, I mean, that's, you see, that's, that's the other part of the equation that's a lot kind of harder mm. to, to, to factor in. And, uh, you know, I just think people are just too positioned for a bounce in the second half, whether mm. it's hedge funds, uh, out on, you know, uh, in their positioning in the markets, as well as other people going into ETFs, focus on oil. And, you know, maybe it's my background on the prop side, but I'd rather see these people washed out first uh, before <laughs> so I get constructed. So how are you positioned? <laughs> well, you probably know, right? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go long oil now. I mean, with that said, you can only pick the bottom in hindsight, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm a big, big builder, oh, sorry, believer in uh, position sizing and building. So mm -hmm. maybe you'd put on a quarter of a position max, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe wait another quarter, another two quarters, and then build it up in that way. The BOE <laughs> and also the RBA. Yes. How is that going to uh, pan out? So we got those next week. Yeah. And I think what you will find is the market, as it likes to do, tries to find who's next, right, on according to what the theme is, right? And we've seen a lot of uh, a loosening and dovish bias uh, from the start of the year, surprises from the, you know, Reserve Bank of India. Uh, we just had uh, the monetary policy out of Singapore out here. So everyone's just kind of expecting the same theme on the RBA um, and the BOE. And the RBA was very interesting in Australia. If you'd gone back two months ago, maybe even two and a half months, there was very few people who were expecting cuts, right? Mm -hmm. And now we've basically done a, a 180 on that, and pretty much everyone across the street is expecting, you know, at least, uh, you know, 50 basis points at some point. So mm -hmm. I actually think, if you look at the Aussie dollar, I think, you know, the days of 80 cents are long gone. We were around, I think, 78, 79 oh. this morning. And I think we need to get a 75, 70, and you'll see that probably by the end of the year. By the end of the year. And also BOE, uh, they've also had a history of moving ahead in terms of hiking rates. I I is history uh, not going to apply this time around? I have to be honest, I've gotten the BOE wrong, and so is most people, right? Um, as much as I'm a fan of, uh, of, uh, of the governor, Mr. 
Carney, um, I call him the George Clooney of central bankers. Uh, you know, I can't figure out what they're doing. You know, one, one, one statement, it seems like they may be moving towards hiking, mm -hmm. the next they're kind of backing off. What was interesting from the minutes that I think a lot of people missed last week was mm -hmm. you had two hawks mm -hmm. and now they kind of went back to roost with the doves, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this happened when about cable, uh, you know, sterling on the dollar was about 151 and a half. Uh, and we're not actually too far from that. So again, to mm -hmm. me, if there's one major cross out there that I think still needs to kind of tip over uh, against the U.S. dollar, it's probably sterling, in my um, view. Okay, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. So Carney is the George Clooney. I I've heard, heard other expressions like he acts like a jilted boyfriend because you can't figure out what he's trying to do. Really appreciate your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a good speaker, and he's a good-looking man, so I okay. give credit where it's due. <laughs> so oil being stretched out into 2016, at least the price recovery, and the USA is going to be the emerging market of the world. That is a key point of K. Van Peters. Really appreciate it. And Tony, much appreciate your time as well.